Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Honam Shah, a senior content analyst from Media Resources, and I'm so thrilled to have the privilege of uh, hosting this impact interview with Mr. Uh, Wadaru ikushima san the general manager of New Energy Business Development of Marubeni Corporation. Today, we are eager to gain valuable insights from uh, Mr. Ikujima about Marubeni's fascinating journey in the renewable energy sector and the company's vision in shaping a sustainable future in the Asia-Pacific region and beyond. So first of all, could you please walk us through your career journey and share with us one thing that has given you the most sense of accomplishment as the general manager uh, for new energy business development of uh, Marubeni Cooperation. So the last decade, I was uh, heavily involved in renewable business, uh, especially offshore wind, uh, hydropower, and biomass power, and gradually now shifting to new energy. Uh, based on the experience, especially in the offshore wind, which is very complicated, uh, this sort of a complicated project achievement will help also very complicated uh, future new energy business, such as green hydrogen or blue ammonia. Thank you so much for sharing us with your background, Mr. Mikushima. Uh, so looking ahead, what are uh, Marubeni Cooperation's plan for the expansion and the growth in Australia's hydro market? And what role do you see the company playing in shaping the future of renewable energy in not only Australia, but also the whole Asia-Pacific Asia region? So firstly, uh, our primary target is green hydrogen. Uh, we are the part of the CQH2 project together with Stanwell, Osaka, uh, Kansai Electric, uh, Iwatani Industries, and Keppel. And uh, this project, we are in the feed process, and we want to make this really happen. Uh, hopefully, within the next two years, we will go feed, uh, FID. Uh, that's a, our primary target. But also, uh, we are looking for opportunities in blue ammonia. Uh, also, uh, we are building a one green hydrogen project in South Australia. Uh, this project will be hopefully completed in next three months. And then we will be exporting uh, green hydrogen to Indonesia uh, in a hydrogen absorbing alloy. So this project is sponsored by uh, Japanese uh, Minister of, uh, Ministry of Environment. And besides that, we are also looking for the opportunity of a sustainable aviation fuel in the future. So we are trying to do anything possible in the new energy arena in Australia. And we are also be an investor. At the same time, we want to be an off-taker and also a trader on the products which is coming out from Australia. Uh, we will be trading those uh, products worldwide. That's our aim. Thank you uh, for sharing with us, uh, Mr. Ikushima. And speaking of the feature project that you mentioned in your uh, last questions, uh, Merubini Cooperation, as I understand, is now undertaking a demonstrator scale hydrogen production and battery storage uh, project in South Australia, uh, which aims to transport green hydrogen from South Australia to Indonesia, uh, as I mentioned before. So to deliver such a benchmark project, what do you think is actually the key technology or technical factor of effectively combining a hydrogen production facility with a storage system? And how do you foresee the future of green hydrogen tree between Australia and Japan? So actually, this project is, as I mentioned, sponsored by the Japanese government. And the primary target is to make hydrogen. But at the same time, since uh, South Australia has a surplus of power, so we will try to get the negative price power and store it in the battery and also charge uh, to the hydrogen facility or maybe sell it to the grid. So technically, it's not a something new, but uh, we uh, have an affiliate called Smartest Energy Australia based in Sydney, and this is a power retail company, and we will be using this uh, Smartest Energy uh, to uh, utilize the batteries, store, stored power, uh, charging or discharging at the right timing. Uh, not only we are making the hydrogen, but also we are making the use of uh, negative power in South Australia to also st stabilize the grid. Thank you, Mr. Ikujima. Uh, Japan has also been an important trade partner of uh, Australia for many years. And Japan has also set ambitious target of achieving net zero by importing and utilizing green hydrogen, uh, especially imported from Australia. So considering the current uh, collaboration between Japan and Australia in both 
private and public sector. So what do you think would be uh, the future pathway of hydrogen trade between those two nations? And what role will Merovini cooperation play in consolidating the international supply chain? So uh, first of all, uh, the cost of hydrogen should be reasonable in order for everyone to trade in the future. And the big question will be how to transport the hydrogen from Australia to Japan or elsewhere. Uh, as I mentioned, we are pre uh, preparing a project in South Aus Australia uh, to export hydrogen, but this is, will be in the form of a uh, hydrogen absorbing alloy, which is still, you know, sort of a, very expensive. Uh, the other possibility is to liquefy the hydrogen and to, and to ship it like LNG, uh, but this is also very costly at this moment. However, we are going to study throughout the uh, CQH2 project and find out how it's going to work. And in the worst case, I think we can ship uh, the hydrogen in the form of uh, am green ammonia. The green ammonia uh, transportation is already ongoing in a normal industrial basis. So uh, we are uh, seeking three opportunities. Uh, but in any case, if the hydrogen product becomes tradable, we will be trading uh, from J here to Japan uh, or elsewhere of the world. Where we, wherever we can find the trading company. Okay, thank you uh, for sharing as well, as well Mr. Ikushima. Uh, as I remember, you also mentioned the really featured project, the CQH2 uh, in Queensland. So, uh, speaking of this highly anticipated uh, Central Queensland hydrogen project that Marubeni will get involved and explore uh, liquefied hydrogen to Japan, could you please share with us the latest proceedings of the implementation of this project? And what would be the most uh, challenging uh, technical and commercial part of operating and developing this mm. uh, project, in your opinion, and from the perspective of the So uh, we just started to get into the feed process uh, last um, May. Uh, so we are still in the early stage, but we anticipate uh, that uh, maybe the liquefaction phase will be the most difficult and also most costly. So we will try to you know, solve this problem as soon as possible. So it, and if uh, it doesn't work, of course, we have to find a backup plan how, how to export the hydrogen. Uh, so the challenges we have is, of course, the liquidation phase. Uh, also, it's a huge project. So we need to, for the, at least for the phase one, we need two gigawatts of renewable power, whether we buy from the grid or whether we build a new facility. So this is also challenging. And the project itself will be like billions of dollars. So how to get the finance? And also it will be a very complicated project. So the EPC part is also very important. And we have lots of difficulties in the past in Australia to build something. So we would like to very carefully evaluate how to harmonize the EPC. All right, thank you, Mr. Kishima, for sharing your profound insights and expertise on Marubini Cooperation's endeavor in the renewable energy sector. It has been a really enlightening and inspiring conversation, and we greatly appreciate your valuable contribution to uh, this interview. Looking ahead, I think Marubini Cooperation's strategic plan for expansion and growth in Australia's hydro market holds great promise and your vision for uh, the company's role in shipping the renewable energy landscape across uh, not only Australia, but also the whole Asia-Pacific region uh, is also inspiring and um, exciting mm -hmm. for all the uh, stakeholders getting involved in this industry. And we eagerly anticipate waiting this more uh, positive impact that Marubini Cooperation mm -hmm. will continue to make in this dynamic industry in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, first, we, we will complete our South Australia project, and then we will you know, make the CQH to happen. Thank you very much.